to start recording the session now. Uh, thank you all for joining us. A uh, little bit of housekeeping. If you um, are not muted, we're asking that you please mute yourself. Um, if there are any questions or comments, we could take those in the chat and we will reserve some time to address those later in our presentation. Um, I wanna just introduce myself. My name is Holly Owings. I'm with Earth Design um, with um, one of the consultant teams. Um, I'm a landscape architect and um, wanna thank you all for joining us tonight and for taking the time to um, hear about the project and to give us your feedback. So you're all here because of the Black River Water Trail and Park Network. So I'm gonna give you a really quick kind of background on the project and talk about um, our presentation today. All right, um, our three presenters tonight are myself. I'm gonna give a really quick background. Again, I'm Holly Owings, I'm a landscape architect with Earth Design. Um, also Trip Muldrow, he is a planner with Arnett Muldrow. He's gonna go over um, our community engagement piece and some of the feedback that we received on this project. Um, and then Michael Etheridge, who's also with Earth Design, will go over um, our regional plan and kind of where we are to date on this project. Okay, so first off, I just want to give everybody a, a background information about this project. So there's a large steering committee. Um, There's basically a committee of people that we worked with um, on this project. Um, so a lot of people from the, the conservation community um, are involved with this project. Um, Open Space Institutes is our actual client on this project. Um, they work alongside a lot of these conservation groups. Um, we also have um, several of the local municipalities and towns were also on here. The town of Kingstree, the town of Andrews, Georgetown County, Williamsburg County. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we had um, representation from the community. Um, also, um, we are um, we have members of state parks and the National Park Service who also served on the serving on the steering committee. The design team, like I said, um, Earth Design is the lead designer on this team, but we we organized a group of other um, design professionals to help us. One of those is Arnett Muldrow and Associates, who's a planning group. Um, so they helped us with our community outreach um, and community engagement piece. Um, ADC Engineering, we used them um, to really look at feasibility. Um, and then Craig Alden Davis um, is an architect. We use them um, to help us with some of the site planning and some of the graphics um, that will be incorporated into this um, final report. So where we are in the state, this just shows you um, where the Black River is. A lot of you are from this area, so you know um, that our project extends between um, King Street and um, the Rocky Point Community Forest. There are several communities along this corridor. Um, so like I said, we have several of those people who served on our steering committee and making sure that the voice of these communities um, like King Street, Andrews, the Choppy community, um, and, and people who live in northern Georgetown County and, and across Williamsburg County, um, where the section of the river um, corridor runs through. Um, that was very important that we stay connected to the communities and make sure that, that their voice was heard um, throughout this process. So how did this process or how did this project come about? So first off, I just want to say that some of you who have been involved with the project or maybe went to some of the other community sessions, this would be a repeat of information. But for anybody that's new here tonight, um, we just wanted to cover this really quickly. Um, so before this project, um, before this regional plan, and um, corridor study kicked off, um, there was a lot of things that were already happening along this corridor. Um, the town of Kingstree um, 
did um, a deeper dive into looking at um, their branding, um, looking at identity, um, and then looking at how they were really going to connect to the river. Um, so they have um, a plan in place um, to um, put a park in at one of the existing landings, um, boat landings that's associated with downtown. And like I said, they did a branding exercise where basically they're connecting themselves to the Black River. Um, so that really um, shows the importance of this river um, throughout these communities and this corridor. There's been a long history of conservation along this corridor. Um, this area um, has been um, used by um, industrial for used for industrial forest for the past couple of years. The paper industry has a large footprint in this area. Um, as the paper industry uh, has started to sell off parcels of that land, um, that's allowed some conservation groups to come in to be able to protect some of those um, large parcels um, that were being sold off. Um, by the um, as old industrial forests. So one of those um, that exists in this area, which is outside of the town of Andrews, is the Black River Cypress Preserve. Um, so this has already been developed. Um, this is um, open to the public at times, um, but it's a beautiful example of what could ex exist along this corridor. Um, they do. Um, forest restoration um, in this area. And they also have just a beautiful facility there um, with um, boardwalk systems um, and access to the river and, and wonderful water trails. Across the river, um, the Nature Conserve has a preserve um, of a piece of land that they've protected. Um, they're doing some forestry management on that area as well. Um, so that's just another area that's being protected um, currently along the corridor. And then one of the parcels that's actually part of our plan um, is the Rocky Point Community Forest. Um, this um, was a park that was a segregated park. Um, that was used um, down by the Choppy community. Um, it had closed, um, it has now been reopened and there's joint ownership between um, Georgetown County and the Winyer River Association. So um, there's this partnership with state parks. Mm -hmm. So what we wanted to talk about is that state parks um, was, was on our steering committee. State parks looked at um, this area. There was a void um, of where there wasn't a state park in this area of the state. Um, and so this was a potential for uh, state parks to become involved with this project and to potentially be able to kind of spread their footprint um, to be able to have a park um, in this area to be able to um, serve the needs of this community. So now I'm just gonna kind of go over the project values and goals. So number one, we wanted to make sure that with that whatever we're doing is gonna protect the scenic values and the wilderness quality of this section of the river. This really became important when um, South Carolina DNR um, designated um, a section of this river as part of the scenic corridor. Um, so we wanna make sure that whatever happens along this corridor helps to protect um, this scenic quality um, and the wilderness that happens along the section of river. Now, I will have to say that our entire project area um, is not part of the scenic river corridor. Um, really, the, a part from our project extends from downtown King Street to the Rocky Point Community Forest. Um, and there's only a section of that that's um, considered part of the scenic river corridor. That's basically from downtown King Street to um, just below the town of Andrews.
So the other thing is really understanding how the communities along this river um, have used the river. I mean, the river has a huge history to these communities. You've been connected to it um, for centuries, um, whether that's for access, farming, um, hunting, um, recreation. There's also, um, like I said, this whole wilderness aspect of the river. Um, we know that there's a lot of um, bird species that use this corridor. Um, so we really want to protect those resources as well. Again, kind of getting into the cultural history, um, how people in this area have used the river. So that's very important. I mean, the timber industry has used it. Rice plantations use this. Um, we also know that the Native Americans lived along this corridor. Um, they used this corridor to be able to move and, and do trade up and down. Um, this was used um, a lot for the Civil War, the American Revolutionary War. Um, and then there is a whole nother um, history piece to this corridor too, and that's the African-American history. Um, Martin Luther King gave a famous speech in the town of King Street. Um, and there still is um, a large black community that lives um, within this area, especially in, in Williamsburg County. So we just wanna make sure that the history of the corridor, the, the past culture, um, the culture as it is now doesn't get lost with whatever um, is planned along this corridor. So that's very important that we know where we were, uh, where we are, and, and then where we're going. Again, just really talking about um, the wildlife that exists within this corridor. You have some unique species um, that live in this area. Um, you know, we can see blackberry, blackbirds, um, black bears, sorry, <laughs> can't let me the third time, black bears, as well as there's several bird, um, bird species that exist along this corridor. Um, this is used for migratory birds, and this is a, a, a huge destination for, for bird watchers um, to come and experience that wildlife. And it's just a beautiful corridor. So this really shows that scenic um, quality of the river. All right, now I'm going to, um, to turn the presentation over to Tripp um, to talk about the community engagement piece that we did um, and outreach to the community. So I'm gonna pull up his PowerPoint and, and pass the presentation on to Tripp now. Sorry, Tripp, give me a second to share my screen. It's okay, Holly. <clears throat> great. Thank you so much for a great introduction, Holly. Um, and thank you for everyone who's here um, this evening. Um, this is a really special project um, for all of us who are involved um, as a native of South Carolina and a property owner along the Black River um, that has deep family roots uh, all along the river from Lee County to Georgetown County. This is an um, amazing project. And uh, I hope you all will see um, some of the uh, fascinating things that all the community kind of comes together on, on the community survey results here. So Holly, if you'll uh, advance this here and we'll talk about the survey results. Um, you know, from the very beginning of this, we wanted to make sure that anyone who values the river, whether um, they are property owners, users, or people interested in the project were heard. And we collected responses from April to September 2021. Um, in my experience, 
we've been doing surveys for a long time and this is the second most um, responsive survey we've ever had. Almost 1,500 responses. Um, we had outreach and engagement that included Post and Courier that posted the links to the survey, the story map itself, on-site engagement in key locations. We had public me uh, meetings um, in Andrews, Georgetown, and King Street. And then certainly we had local promotion through allies and partners throughout the corridor. So the data that we're sharing this evening is fascinating to see, and I'm eager to share it with you all this evening. Um, one of the things that's important, um, we track the zip codes of those who responded to the survey. You can see that King Street, uh, those of you who are 29556 residents, were the most um, predominant answers to the survey. And certainly we're very interested in those who are local um, and how they engage with the Black River. We see Andrews as the second most predominant, Georgetown as the third most predominant, and then you see Salters Hemingway uh, and then some of the others all throughout. Uh, one of the things about the survey is this was open to anyone across the United States of America. So it was important to see that there was so much interest from a local perspective, but also a national interest in the survey results. So when you look at this, we're looking at about 55% local, immediate local, and, and then others throughout the country. Uh, when we look at the county breakdown, um, <clears throat> Williamsburg County, um, certainly the most um, predominant in the answers and the Georgetown, not a far second. So um, we're looking at um, about 60% from both of those counties and then Ori, Charleston, Florence, and you can kind of see the others kind of break out. So we had survey respondents from the local area and from throughout the United States of America who are very interested in what is happening here, uh, the beauty of the area, and what the opportunities this area presents. Um, we, we always like to look at, you know, um, important things as far as uh, gender, race, and ethnicity. Typically in surveys, and I will say this as a survey administrator for 25 years, um, we typically have more um, um, female respondents. We typically have more respondents that are older, and we typically have more white respondents than we do respondents who are people of color or uh, other ethnic ethnicities. Um, and so this bore true in this survey. And we wanted to be aware of this as we did the survey work. 57% uh, of the respondents were female, 41% male. Um, we had 22% uh, African-American, 73% white or Caucasian. Um, and then you can see the age distribution as tilting a bit older. This is very normal for a survey response. And we, as we examine this, we use this as a benchmark to look at um, respondents overall so that we can make sure that we're being representative so that even if the survey responses aren't as big as the population, we want to make sure we're examining the results to make sure we're not getting differences with certain um, genders or uh, racial uh, composition. Um, we look at relationship to the co corridor. 52% um, were residents of Williamsburg or Georgetown County. And then when we add to that people who own property along the Black, Black River, that increased it to 66%. 
So we're looking at two thirds of the respondents are residents and people who own property along the Black River, and then about a third who are visitors to the Black River Corridor. What we found from property owners, and I think this was really important, property owners along the river are critical to any kind of project of this nature. And we understand that property owners are going, going to have naturally have concerns about uh, development, um, access, trespassing, any issues that we might see. What was splendid about the responses is that 58% were supportive of developing the Black River Water Trail and Parks, Net Parks Network. 41% had concerns. And when we look at those concerns, um, we have people who, um, at the end of the day, it was about 20% who were very, very concerned. Um, we're looking at those who had concerns and they were willing to acknowledge that as we do this project, we need to address those concerns. There was a lot more agreement. And so, uh, it's wonderful to see property owners naturally have concerns, but also be able to address those in the planning process. And these concerns were those that have been addressed in the plan. As a local resident, you know, and I'm just using a few quotes, is a cultural and historical touchstone Black River is a way of life around here, and I can certainly speak as someone who grew up with family along the Black River. These sentiments mean a lot to me as a um, South Carolinian and as someone who grew up uh, recreating in the area. How often do people use the river? Um, we see um, certainly because the respondents were open to people from across the United States, about one in every four have never actually interacted with the river. What we do see, though, is a third are interacting with the river once or a few times per year. And then we see uh, once a week or more than once a week, about 20% of the respondents in the survey. So what we did and what we were able to do is parse out the data so that we could understand who was using it more regularly and who was using it more infrequently. Um, in what ways do people currently use the river? Um, Family and friend gatherings was by far the number one. And this ran across racial lines, age lines, location lines. Um, gathering along the river was really the most predominant way folks interacted with the Black River. And I think this is such an important note because the Black River is a place that unites the communities along it and provides opportunities for people to gather. Swimming, paddling, fishing, picnicking, boating, all were important pieces of this, but far and away, gathering and families and friends were the most important. When we looked at the different communities, we saw three things kind of just, you know, come through, whether it was King Street, Andrews, or Georgetown, gathering was the number one option. Uh, those folks who lived in King Street were a little more uh, interested in riverbank fishing. Uh, when we look at those in Andrews, swimming, uh, those in Georgetown, paddling, but you can see that among the three communities along the river, we have pretty consistent responses as far as peop uh, how people interact with uh, the Black River. Uh, we looked at what access points people currently use and what access points people would use in the future. We found some uh, good responses here. 
uh, the Browns Ferry Boat Ramp uh, was uh, number one. You see a very close second, the Gillen Memorial uh, Park um, Boat Landing, Black River Landing, which is actually uh, currently available and looking at uh, being developed or enhanced in the future. And then the Pea House Boat Ramp and the Pine Tree uh, Boat Ramp. And you kind of see a, a, a drop off from there to the Black River Cypress Preserve, the Nature Conservancies, um, and then other uh, choices and answers. We look at um, the communities. And one of the things about the survey that was wonderful was that we could take the zip codes of those who responded and understand where residents of King Street, Andrews, and Georgetown each had different preferences. So if you look at King Street, Gilland, and Black River Landing were number one, Andrews, Pea House, and Pine Tree number one, and Georgetown, Browns Ferry, and Rocky Point were the key access points. When we looked at the priorities, and this is so critical throughout the survey, across the board, no matter where people were, no matter what people uh, experienced, um, is that litter, and cleanliness were critical um, to the um, future of access to the river. Um, the scale here is a zero to five scale. So anything over four means people are strongly in agreement. And so cleaning litter from the river and riverbanks was by far the number one. Protecting the scenic qualities was number two. Preserving the cultural and historic resources was number three. And protecting the ecology, conservation, and restoration, and habitat protection were number four. And you can really see those kind of dominating the discussion all throughout the survey responses. When you look at activities that people wanted to enjoy along the corridor, uh, canoeing, kayaking was by far the number one. Hiking, picnic, camping, wildlife viewing, fishing, both from a boat and from a riverbank were all ranked very strong. Over one in every four respondents indicated that those were the activities they would most like to see along the Black River. When we look at that um, break, broken down by the communities, we see um, kind of a similar situation where King Street, Andrews, and Georgetown don't differ entirely. Um, we see picnics uh, ranking uh, high in all of them, fishing, ranking high in all of them, events and activities, um, and looking at hiking and camping even as alternatives, depending on what county or community you're in. Amenities. Um, this relates extremely closely to the cleanliness and to the litter. Trash bins, far and away the number one um, desired uh, amenity along the water trail. Toilets, parking, picnic tables, trail signage, and regulations all ranked very high. But you can see that trash and litter are a major concern. And this is important from property owner standpoint, from visitor standpoint, from image standpoint, and from overall development standpoint, that maintaining a beautiful access to the Black River, which is such a pristine environment, uh, should be an important uh, component of any development that we're considering along the river. 
what was fascinating too, and I'm I have to confess as a survey administrator, um, seeing 60, 59 percent willing to pay a fee to uh, use developed trailhead sites. Uh, that is remarkable to see. Um, we certainly have folks who are unsure, and we certainly have folks that don't want to pay a fee. Uh, but it was good to see that folks are interested in being able to pay a fee for the uh, accessibility to these areas. As far as accessibilities, 14% um, of the survey respondents had someone in their household, household who had disability. And this is so important. I think oftentimes we think about those who have easy access to a place. And as a uh, person who has members of my family who have disabilities, um, and who understand what a splendid resource this is, we need to pay attention to those who have someone who may have a disability that could um, impede them from enjoying the parks along the, uh, the river. So um, by far, ADA accessible trails were the most important. ADA parking and ADA accessible restrooms were the most important things among those who had someone in their household with a disability that might impede their ability to interact with the corridor. And we had tons of respondents who were involved with many, many, many activities, groups, organizations, as this plan develops, we think often about state parks, we think often about designation, but at the end of the day, developing a park network along the Black River is going to take the entire community and the entire community brings amazing resources because the folks who live in Williamsburg County, Georgetown County, and all around the Black River have a vested interest in seeing this area develop in a way that benefits the community and benefits the groups that the communities serve. So it was wonderful to see these responses. Certainly, we had concerns uh, keeping it maintained, safety and security, cleanliness, making sure people weren't trespassing. We're all concerns about, about the Black River. Um, and certainly in the plan, we were addressing these throughout. We found this to be very consistent throughout the survey responses. And what we saw people get excited about preservation, the natural beauty, uh, natural beauty, the history, not overbuilding the area, expanding access, being family friendly, and providing economic opportunity for the communities along the Black River. What an amazing resource that we all have as South Carolinians. And it was great to see so much um, consistent views on how this could happen. And some sample comments. The Black River, it's a way of life. My family got baptized in the Black River. Peaceful, beauty, tranquility, hunting and gathering, a primary food source. This area means home to us, our children and grandchildren. We have found many pottery shards and would like to learn more about them. Access to wildlife, a nice scenery, a chance to make memories of friends and family. And as someone who grew up along the Black River with my family, these sentiments reckon true when I hear them. 
And I'm so appreciative that many respondents echoed those throughout the survey. Trip, thank you. Um, we've had a few comments in the chat. I'm just gonna like just bring those up now. Um, we had a comment uh, that some of the litter that people have seen while they've been paddling the section between King Street and Georgetown has happened. Um, where litter was left, where locals were fishing at landing spots. Um, we had another person who chimed in that in their experience um, in other areas on lakes and creeks, they have also seen litter left behind by people fishing from the banks. Um, there's a comment that um, I think it's Marsh Dean, that you go by Marsh, not Robert, correct? Um, is working on a series that's going to be addressing this issue. Um, we have another comment on some of the litter that was left. Um, it's in the three miles directly down river from King Street, uh, but um, this is from Lewis Strucker, uh, but they're working on part of that problem. They found it interesting that no matter where you go, everyone thinks they have the worst litter bugs. No oh, thanks, Lewis. Um, okay, perfect. Yeah, um, I think we, Marsh, we, let's connect. Um, I'll, I'll send you my contact information. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, thank you all for your comments. Um, I'm gonna move to introduce um, Michael Etheridge, who is also on our um, consultant team. I'm going to pull up his uh, presentation. Now, and he's going to talk about um, kind of how we're addressing these concerns and the work that we've been doing um, for the regional plan of this corridor. Take it away, Michael. Great. Thanks, Holly. And thanks for everyone who joined us tonight. Um, if you want to bring up my next slide. So the first thing that we kind of wanted to tackle when we started analyzing this was getting an idea of the corridor land that was adjacent to the river um, and identify the areas and quantify them in some way um, and really focus our efforts in that based on the proximity to the river. And in this map, you can kind of start to see where those are located as well as the connections between the rivers and the road and uh, places where the road interacts with lands that are adjacent to the river. Within this area, like we said before, there has been a direct effort at conservation um, and also providing some public access areas within this corridor. Um, and there's been a great effort to protect the scenic quality. Uh, approximately the 20,000 acres, some of these are dedicated for public use. Um, and that's uh, about 40% of the total acres that are adjacent to the river corridor. The team also wanted to look at areas that were currently being impacted by development. And you can see in orange here, what we're trying to show are areas where there are subdivided neighborhoods um, and higher densities. Um, and, you know, just throwing a nod to maybe if this continues, there is the potential that it could change the scenic quality. So as part of the access study, um, our focus from a paddling perspective was was sort of integral to the pro the, the project. Um, and uh, we wanted to look at it uh, from the perspective of, from the perspective of the paddler and also have the advice of paddlers that uh, would know 
better about it than ourselves. So we work specifically with a paddler focus group and members of the Roanoke Rivers uh, uh, organization in North Carolina and how they've have addressed uh, similar issues in their organization, um, as well as the advisement of people on our steering committee who are paddlers. Um, and just getting a good understanding of what it might be like to travel this corridor end to end. Um, looking at it, you know, from a day, a full day paddle where someone could spend five or six hours on a canoe, um, it, it, it amounts to basically about seven days if you want to get it from end, to, want to take it from end to end. Um, what I'm about to show you uh, is how we kind of looked at the additional access points and the overnight accommodations that would be required as part of that. Here's our current access. Um, you can see there are a couple of locations on the upper reaches uh, around King Street with the balance of the access being mostly within Georgetown County. Um, uh, and, and then a, a gap in between. So what that tells us is we're gonna need some some launches in this area and that that jives with what the survey was telling us but what uh, also came forth in the survey was the fact that they did not want to increase motorboat access in these areas so we've made a purposeful effort that these future access locations anything that we include in this upper reach of the river is only accessible via uh, a paddler's perspective in a canoe or a kayak such as these, um, just some examples of some locations along the river and other areas around the state to get an idea of the possibility for kayak launches. And again, uh, the, the other portion of this was how do we accommodate an overnight traveler who may want to paddle the, the extent of the corridor? Um, and here's examples of, of what those might look like, uh, both being elevated forms of riverside camping on a platform or a treehouse. Which is quite important based on the amount of flood zone located along this river. Um, we understand that many of the people uh, on the, the call here and many others are, are, were very affected by the floods in 2015 and in some ways they're still recovering and figuring out how to move forward from that. And the reasoning behind the elevated structures was directly uh, related to the level of flooding that it, this corridor experiences. Um, but we understand aside from the, the flood events that are storm-based, there's also seasonal impact where there's higher waters and parts of the year, like in the winter and generally becomes lower in the summer that could affect navigability. Um, uh, and we also wanted to you know, use things that were conducive to protecting the environment and being respectful of the wetlands and the natural ecosystems that occur along the landscape and thus that's, that's why we're suggesting these elevated features. Another thing we looked at was the building uh, site suitability along this corridor and what you're looking at the colors represent uh, preferable locations um, uh, adjacent to the corridor as well as average you know conditions um, and what should be noted is that uh, we identified the areas that were preferable, but there were also areas that were severely impacted by soil types and wetlands. Um, Holly, if you can pull the next slide, I wanna kind of address that. Um, our model of how these areas, ooh, thanks. Ooh. I think I got a slide out of order, Michael. Uh, it's down it's down later the cat is down later so what i do you want to skip ahead and come back or do you want me to kind of um i can just speak to this you want to just speak to this and then we'll come back to the cabins yeah okay um we'll come back to the cabin so what i wanted to say about this is sort of the uh not the last portion but definitely a significant portion of how we handled our analysis and design 
Um, it came from um, interactions with the National Park Service and landscape architects from around the state in the form of a, a two-day charrette. Um, and that's really just a fancy word that we use for a design session. They're very collaborative in nature and they're very focused in a short amount of time. Um, this charrette was complemented not only by members of the professional community and our, our consultant team and the steering committee, but we had participants from Clemson University's third year landscape architecture studio who took this corridor on as a project amongst themselves. Um, and their input, along with the professionals who participated, is being incorporated and uh, looked at as part of the final report and the plans for this project. Okay. For instance, um, documents such as this uh, were, were sort of results of of that charrette and products that were created that combine a lot of the elements that we spoke about previously uh, relating to conservation and access and how those two can work together. It shows a lot of the parcels we mentioned earlier, as well as uh, possible sites for future uh, park areas. Um, it also addresses their distance from one another um, to, to understand how one point can be paddled to the next and the amount of time it might take to get from point A to point B. And then along that same corridor, uh, the parcels shown here uh, were what developed out of the charrette, um, both a state park parcel and the, the Rocky Point parcel that many of you are familiar with, uh, the State Park parcel being located uh, at Lower Bridge and uh, the Rocky Point being further down the corridor. That's fine, Holly. So if you look at that upper portion, um, we, we heavily relied on what we gleaned from the survey to inform our program elements along with the input from the steering committee and the local uh, community representatives. Um, and this was sort of the result of that, um, making sure that there are gathering spaces and making sure that there is access to the river, protecting the wetlands with boardwalks and including fishing piers and hiking trails, certainly a kayak takeout and, and uh, trash receptacles at these locations so that we don't uh, participate in continuing the problem. Also along the corridor, um, everyone knows state parks uh, typically will have some sort of visitor center. This is just an idea of, of what those may look like, sort of a vision board, if you will, um, of how those things will come together. And uh, next slide, please. And also more, not necessarily the riverside camping and the platform forms, but also more traditional style camping that you see along state park parcels, um, separate from that paddler access camping. Here's your cabins. And there's our cabins. What I wanted to say about that was that um, the Black River Cypress Preserve really has, has served as our model for how, even in these impacted areas, thoughtful design and it can be incorporated into these environments and they can, they can operate together and be um, an asset to each other. Yeah, and this also shows um, bathroom facilities and shelters. Um, for picnicking, which was also one of the desires of most of these communities um, along the section of River Corridor. Thanks, Holly. And then we move on down the river to Rocky Point, um, where the, we have the unique situation where there are, two, there are two property owners here. It's a collaboration between the Winyah Rivers and Georgetown County and how we can meet the needs of both of those property owners um, uh, while protecting the natural environment. You'll see more of the gathering spaces, um, restroom facilities, the possibility of a cultural or interpretive center, wildlife viewing, 
Um, there is the possibility for further uh, family camping and RV camping, um, if, if so chosen. Um, and I guess one thing to point out is that it was it was made we were made aware of is that the kayak launch at Rocky Point, while it functions very well for the, the boating, the motorboat users, uh, a kayak launch on Choppy Creek would probably be more well suited because it's easier to get in and out of the kayaks and you're not disturbed by the amount of traffic. So we are we're wanting to show a, a kayak launch on Choppy Creek adjacent to uh, the possibility of some riverside camping um, or group camping um, and have been connected with a series of trails uh, and boardwalks. Uh, this is just some examples of, of how that's been handled in the past, very emblematic of what we're proposing here, um, allowing for access to all um, in these uh, critical environments. Again, uh, it doesn't have to be a hiking trail. It could be a multimodal path. It could include uh, bicycling. And riverside fishing. Um, uh, locations along, along the corridor, specifically within these two parcels for, for dockside or riverside fishing. Um, signage is appropriate. Uh, playgrounds hit high on the survey. Um, wayfinding so that you know uh, your way around these parcels. Uh, and of course, the inclusion of trash receptacles. And lastly, I think it's important to note, um, based on the history of this, but also the combined vision of the state parks uh, and Winyaw Rivers and our, our project partners on a dedication to conservation and a reforestation of these parcels, um, giving a nod to their history and also protecting the, the um, ecological value of these timbers. Uh, very similar to what has been done at Black River Cypress Preserve. Okay. Good. Thanks, Holly. Thank you, Michael. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Again, we want to thank you all for joining us. Um, we haven't had any other comments or questions in the chat. Um, we could take more questions in the chat now if anybody has any questions or comments about, about the, um, what we've already presented. While I'm waiting for things to come through the chat, I can go ahead and just tell you what the next steps are. So our team is in the process of um, wrapping up our, our plans, wrapping up our, our study. So our study will consist of a lot of the plans that you guys um, saw that were presented today, um, the survey information. Um, we are generating a report that will compile um, all the information that um, through our analysis, the uh, steps that we took throughout the pro project, um, and then um, what our recommendations are for the corridor. And so um, we're working on that now. We will be handing that over to the steering committee um, in January. We're still working on some more graphics um, for these parcels. Um, some renderings of what some of these, um, and we showed you some pictures of what some of these could work, these things could look like, but we're working on actual renderings um, to kind of hone in on the character of what we want to see along the corridor for a potential visitor center or cabin or even the kayak launch. Um, but that's, those are our next steps um, is to produce a report that will basically outline what um, our recommendations are for the corridor, and then just to kind of highlight what the history is and our SAD analysis, um, and then the entire project um, process. Lewis has a um, common question. Yes, next steps. And then the timeline of that is that, yeah, we will hand that over to the steering committee um, in January. That should happen beginning or middle of January.
Does anybody else have any questions, comments, concerns? We are recording this. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be rebroadcast or not, but we are recording this um, so that if it needs to be shared with anybody, but we just definitely wanted to have a record of, um, of this meeting. And we are capturing all of the um, comments in the chat as well so that our team has those um, and can pass those on to our clients and the steering committee. Okay, Michelle Lewis. Lewis and I spoke to William Freem about the naming of the Mill Street Landing to Black River. Any concerns about the generic name? Are we, we aren't doing a big branding process with this um, corridor study right now. That'll be looked at a little bit later um, just because there was a, uh, a lot of, um, that's gonna be a whole nother effort to make sure that all the communities get their identities. Um, so we haven't really looked at the naming of that landing specifically and how that ties into the rest of the corridor. That'll really be something that will happen with the next steps of this. Um, as you can see through the steering committee that we outlined at the beginning, there's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of people <laughs> who are involved on this project um, from different interest groups, uh, from paddlers to landowners, to the conservation community, to um, you know these different communities that live within the corridor. So what we really want to make sure with that branding effort um, and whatever happens along this corridor is that everybody's voice is heard. So that's going to be a much, a much bigger conversation and effort that's going to need to happen to move forward. And then obviously with state parks, they're going to have their own, you know, branding state parks has a brand. Um, so really that's going to be um, kind of a beast on its own um, that'll need to be addressed with some of the next steps is how all these things work together um, along this water trail. Get a quiet group tonight. Well, I um, just want to thank everybody for coming and joining us this evening. Um, we want to be respectful of your time, so we won't hold anybody up. Um, that This is um, really um, the end of our presentation, um, where our team is happy to hang out um, here for a few more minutes, if anybody has any comments, questions, or concerns. But um, other than that, everybody have a great night. And we just thank you all for joining us. And thank you for, for your comments and your feedback and, and being involved with this process. <laughs> Thanks, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, y'all. This was fantastic and thank exciting. No, thank, thank you. Well, yeah, and thank you for all that your group does and oh, all the input. Well, seeing some of the visuals is just uh, it's phenomenal.